the back, the of Cavani, who produces the first in the blue corner. This fighter is 20 years of age, he weighed over 68 for two kilograms. He hails from Stockholm and fights out of ABT with a record of two wins, two losses. In the blue corner, Robert Hayanesu. And across the cage in the red corner, this fighter is 21 years of age, he weighed over 67 for four kilograms. He hails from Lincoln and fights out of Drew Miller fighting with a record of three wins, two losses. In the red corner, Matt. Ionescu in the blue corner, black trunks, and just to make things simple, Brocklesby in the red corner, also in the black trunks. Ionescu, taller, leaner fighter, looks like he's going to have the range advantage. Touch gloves to get underway. Orthodox for Ionescu, southpaw for Brocklesby. And a good knee to the body there, but... Brocklesby drives him to the fence. He looks like he's under the hips and he's going to take him for a ride. And Esco does the right thing though in there, bouncing straight back up, not allowing Brocklesby to set his position. That's so frustrating. It's such an important trait to have. Not conceding the takedown. Just because you get taken down doesn't mean you have to just, all right, I'm down. Personally, if I take someone down that just accepts it, I love life. When you take down the guy who just bounces right back up, it's like, man, I just spent all that energy to get you here. Stay down, dude. <laughs> that is so frustrating and such a way to break another opponent mentally. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I've said it before, another good takedown there for Brocklesby. But there's, there's something to be said about, yeah, there is technique in getting back up, but a lot of that is in a mentality, as you say, not accepting it. Not accepting it. You're absolutely right. All the technique in the world doesn't matter if you don't have the focus or the determination to drive for it. But Brocklesby has uh, grounded Ionescu at this point, managed to contain him a little bit. You can see he's staying head into the chest, very tight, trying to take up all that space between them because that's where uh, Ionescu will try and create some space. Well, uh, right now, Ionescu's making the mistake of closing guard. You can't close guard with your head against the cage. Even Damian Maya, the greatest jiu-jitsu competitor ever to compete in MMA, he opens his guard when he gets that close to the cage. You have to. It becomes a wrestling match at that point. Brocklesby there slid past the guard into side control. Very strong, good cross face. Looks briefly for the neon belly, but I think he's quite happy to um, contain Ionescu at this point. Just ride a bit of time, spend a bit of time riding from the top and then see what opens come up. But Ionescu planting off the cage. Uh, oh, he's trying to do the step over to the beat down position. Being patient is a good thing when you're on top, gravity's on your side, making sure you don't make a mistake because those mistakes are gonna help your opponent. He's at a disadvantage right now. He's on side control on the bottom. Any mistakes is gonna improve his position and decrease yours. So you wanna be patient, look for opportunities, but stay busy. Yeah, and he's managed to, as you say there, close his guard up again. That's actually an advantage for the top guy. I gotta be honest with you, I'd rather, if I was on bottom, let someone pass my guard so I can rotate down to a turtle or a referee's position, get to my knees so I can start working my way up the cage. Having someone between your legs and head trapped, you don't have a guard right now. You can't pivot from side to side. It's actually a horrible position to be in, and if I was the top, I would say don't pass, just beat them up. Yeah, and it looked like uh, Anisku got his feet briefly on the hips, looked like he might try and, uh, and push Brocklesby uh -oh. away. I, we heard the 10 second damage. clapper, so it gets to the position, but just in the nick of time, well, for Ionescu's sake at least, doesn't get to spend much time there landing the ground and pound, but a very impressive first round for Brocklesby. And it looks in the early running of that first round, uh, when Ionescu popped straight back up to his feet, that Brocklesby might have a, a bit of a tougher task to keep him down there, but for the latter two minutes of the round. Didn't really have any trouble. Landed some solid shots sporadically, you know, but he was doing the right thing, not giving up too much space. For every time you posture up to strike, that's a little bit of space for the guy in the bottom. Absolutely, and that's the part where it's a fight. You know, I go for the takedown, you don't see that you want to pop up to your feet, and I go for another one. And it sometimes just comes to, that's where they said the battle of the wills occurs, when both individuals are doing the proper techniques, 
but it's who's going to keep going when the other guy goes, okay, I need to take a breath. And that's when you lose the battle. And uh, reminiscent of the Brockles being named, you know, Johnny, the, uh, the, the professional. I think Johnny's five and one as a professional now and it was always just, you know, really tenacious. You know, even if he was under the cosh, never stopped coming, but a real grinder. And uh, it looks like it, it looks like the younger Brocklesby's got the same traits. It's funny how that can actually go one of two ways. I've seen brothers where they're similar, but I've also seen brothers where the strength of one brother becomes the strength of defending on the other side of the other brother, meaning that one guy's great at taking shots, and all of a sudden the other brother's phenomenal at stopping shots because they have to always battle against each other in the gym. Yeah, Brock will be close to the distance there. There's been a, a couple of occasions where... Oh, hands are connected. Yeah, and arguing where you, you stop the brothers from sparring each other because they get too carried away. <laughs> I have, I've been around that many a times when family members make the worst training partners. Big air miles there. Brockles been dumping Ionescu to the canvas once again. Takes a solid position. Dropping the right hand through. Does the right thing there. Closing the distance. Taking that knee shield away. Yeah, and right now, if I was in Brockelsby's corner, I'd tell him to stay in the guard and just unleash punishment. Because right now, Robert Ansku is not doing the proper things as far as cage fighting is concerned. He's doing too much jujitsu, and that's coming from me. At that point, when you're that close to the cage, again, it turns into a wrestling match. You want to be able to get to your knees, get to a foot, get up the cage. You don't want to be trapped there. There's very few submissions, very few sweeps that are actually going to work because of where you're at. Yeah, tried a little bit there to do the wall walk, but Brock will be just wise to it. Keeps him pinned to the mat. And, you know, as I say, he's not giving up too much at this point. Not giving away too many strikes, just keeping his man closed down, chest to chest. Not giving much room to maneuver as Inescu tries to wall walk again. Well, maybe be able to pull out an armbar here. Oh. I have seen some reverse triangles thrown up from there. And again, they're just not high percentage. Right now, I always say play the percentages. And the percentages right now, Brockersby's in a much better position. He doesn't have someone else's weight on his chest beating down on them. He's not fighting gravity. Gravity is his friend. Where Nescu is all the opposite. Right now, he's fighting gravity. Look at that knee in the face. Good position. Every strike comes down and has weight behind it, gravity. You can't strike hard from the bottom, and you can't pivot for submissions because you're trapped against the cage. Yeah, and he's eating a couple of big hammer fists there, Zionescu. And it keeps keeps going to the wall walk. He might be better off trying to shrimp the other way and get his back to the fence to try and work up that way. But Brocklesby dominating this second round. Big body shots. I like it. A lot of guys forget to go for the body, and it's an open area. Yeah, he looked to trap that arm again. Ionescu was wise to it that time, but with longer left in the second round, if he can get the arm trapped, it be a difficult spot for the Scunfort man. Gets up to his knees, did a good job. Oh, but he did the right thing to go to his knee and grab the single. Oh, the ten, the 10 seconds clap has gone. Brockles been looks for the choke. First tactical error that I can really point at right there, but with only 10 seconds left, I guess going for broke isn't such a bad idea. Yeah, it's so, you know, another good round in the books for Brocklesby. Has to be two rounds to the good for the Gorilla Man. He's trying to go for a palm to palm there, but he's not in on the hips, so it doesn't keep anything from Robert Nelsky being able to just turn the corner and get the takedown. Had that been done earlier in the round, that could have been very costly, but with very, the expression of too little, too late. Yeah, I'm sure Brocklesby heard the clapper, decided to, uh, to try something there. You know, when a 10 second clapper goes, it takes something special to try and finish a fight anyway, but showed the initiative at least. Well, and especially somebody like myself that likes submissions. Sometimes just jumping, that's when I'll go for a footlock. That's where I'll pull guard to a guillotine because it's like, hey, if I get it, great, the fight's over. If I don't, you don't have enough time to make me pay for this mistake. And now Nesco slumped a little bit in the corner from what we could see. You see the shoulders starting to round and the body language has, has definitely changed. He's been fighting from the bottom this whole fight. Constantly wearing his opponent, Brosby, on top of him, you know, on his chest, in his face. He's fighting the hardest fight possible, being stuffed against the cage the way he is. 
you know, it looks like he really favors jiu-jitsu and he likes it, but there's a spot for every aspect of our sport. The cage makes jiu-jitsu very difficult to do. Absolutely, and a nice flicky head kick. Came up pretty fast there from Ionescu, but Brocklesby decides he wants none of that. Gets under the hips again, and he's going to carry him to his corner all the way. Stuffs him back wow. down. Great experience. Took him right to the corner, like you said. And now he can hear his corner talk to him. Perfect. Yeah, and the, you know, onus on the, at this point is on Ionescu to try and make something happen. He's two rounds down. He's on his back. And, you know, he's really got to be working, trying to force that stand up. Maybe making some frames. Trying right, to get up to his right hook. elbow. Ah, he had the right idea there. This is the opportunity in the half guard. You want to put a butterfly in as the bottom fighter. So you can create space to use an elevator to get up to either lift your opponent or to extend your hips out so you can rotate down. Right now the half guard here is so limited. I mean, you might get a Kimura on the far side. It, there are really just not a lot of weapons here except for get up. And right now the way he's stepping over the hips, he's trying to do jiu-jitsu. And again, the best practitioners in the world can't fight with their head against the cage. Yeah, it's the, uh, you know, the little nuances that are, are specific only to MMA, as you mentioned, Frank. You've got the cage, the cage wall, and all of these things. Anything you might do on the mats in, in any other uh, sport doesn't work when you're in this specific situation. It is very much unique to our sport. Wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu. Guess what? None of them compete against a wall. MMA, this is a whole aspect of our sport that no other sport has, that we've developed itself over the years. And, and the guys that understand how to fight well here do extremely well. The guys that don't train against a cage or a wall, they suffer when it comes time. Yeah, and Brock will be pounding away. Does get the pass to side control. And controlling, nice and heavy. You know, center of gravity is low, looking for like the Kizikatami type situation there. Good strong position. And at this point, you know, with maybe a minute left in the final round, Ooh, he's got to be a Hail Mary. Shoulder control there, huh? He even made him grimace. Yeah, digging the head into the chin as well. That's helping to keep Ainescu pinned. And Brocklesby, you know, just grinding, making his ugly, controlling the match, getting the shots off when he can. He's in complete control. I mean, he's been so busy. He is active. He's trying to punish him. There's no reason to stop this uh, and start them up on their feet. If you're the referee, this, he's made this fight as easy as possible for the ref. He's causing damage, constantly improving his position. And now we heard the 10 seconds. It's an easy fight also on the judges to score. And we are going to go to the judges for, I believe, the first time tonight. 13 bouts in. And we're going to go to uh, our first decision here at the Doncaster Dome. Seems like it might be a formality this one. A solid win there for Matt Brocklesby. You know, Colonel's have things to work on from uh, Robert Inescu. 